every year it seems like a Toronto Raptors player ascends themselves into something greater to help the team win more basketball games. So going into this season, who is going to be that player? Which guy is going to be the X factor for the Toronto Raptors this upcoming season? Let's get into it. Welcome to Amateur Hour Sports, where the good times keep rolling on the channel. Thank you so much to everybody who has been showing the support over the last month or so. It's been an unbelievable month. I'm just so grateful for everybody who is enjoying the videos, watching the content. It truly means the world to me. If you like what you see in today's video and you want more of myself talking about the Toronto Raptors in videos just like this, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. But on to today's topic, we're talking about a potential X Factor for the Toronto Raptors this season. Which player is going to be that X factor? Because every year we get another one. It seems like every year there's a player who just ascends into a bigger role, a bigger player, a better player on the Toronto Raptors. Two years ago, I would say it was Pascal Siakam, the most improved player in the NBA, going from seven points per game all the way up to 17 points per game and being a humongous contributor for a Toronto Raptors team that went on to win the NBA championship that year. Last season, I would say that guy was probably Fred Van Vliet going from 11 points per game, going into a starting role for the team, and then putting up 17 points per game. Getting a lot of minutes at point guard when he was healthy. It seemed like even if Kyle Lowry was there, Kyle Lowry was getting more of the two guard spot. Fred Van Vliet was the ball handler, though they did switch a lot. But still, going from 11 points per game all the way up to 17 points per game, it was impressive what Fred Van Vliet accomplished last year, especially in his contract year, earning himself a lovely contract with the Toronto Raptors that I was very happy to give him. But we go into this season, which guy is going to step up and fill that X Factor role? You know, every year we have the one. Who is it going to be this year? Well, I can't really decide on two of them, but we're going to go through the two players I have, starting with OG and Anobi. So if you know me at all, you know I love OG and Anobi. Last season, the start of the season, I was tipping OG and Anobi to be in the MIP race. However, didn't quite reach that level, still improved himself going from 7 points per game all the way up to 11 points per game and had a big cleanup in the shooting department going from 45% from the field all the way up to 50% from the field and from 3 went from 32% all the way up to 39%. So those numbers were there for shooting, rebounding as well went from 3 rebounds to over 5 rebounds per game. So there was development there. I think if there was a higher volume of participation on offense, then those numbers would have been even more relevant, putting him into an MIP conversation. However, that just didn't quite materialize. I think OG and Anobi is content to subdue his role on offense to let the scorers get out there and thrive. These scorers like you know Kyle Lowry, Fred Van Vliet, Pascal Siakam, at times Serge Ibaka. He wants those guys to get theirs, and he's okay to just sit back and let it happen, especially being a younger guy in a rookie contract, only 23 years old still, already putting up these efficient numbers. And, you know, we're talking about OG and Anobi, how he's, you know, he's really good on offense. Well, how about his defense? I think OG and Anobi is easily one of the best defensive players in the NBA. OG and Anobi can guard all five positions on the court easily, easily, you know, I was worried about his ability to guard the center position, but then in the playoffs, in the small ball lineups, playing at center, guarding Daniel Tice, who admittedly is not the greatest center in the world. However, still doing a great job on there. And even in the regular season, there was a game against the Minnesota Timberwolves where all of our true bigs were injured in Marcus Gasol and Serge Ibaka. And we're going up against a top three big in the league, arguably, in Carl Anthony Towns. OG and Anobi played the center position on defense there and subdued Carl Anthony Towns so much that the Raptors dominated the Timberwolves. Carl Anthony Towns did not have a good game. I thought, all right, Carl Anthony Towns is going to eat, but the Raptors are probably still good enough to win. Not even. OG and Anobi defends that guy, that guy down low, that guy on the perimeter. So Ananobi, easily one of the best defenders in the league. Now, where I can see him getting even better is that offensive game because he has those numbers, he has those statistics, those efficient numbers. And obviously, when you increase the volume of that shooting, those efficiency will go down. But 
Can he keep that efficiency at 47 from the field, 35% from three? Absolutely. I think those numbers will get even better if he takes the same amount of shots this year. So giving him a bigger role on offense will allow him to trend upwards in the offensive categories. I think that OG Ananobi is a guy who can learn to pull up off the dribble, create his own shots. I just don't think he's doing it right now because of all these other guys, all these other ball handlers, ball dominant players. In the starting five, I think now more than ever, OG Ananobi's versatility on defense is going to give him a lot of minutes, especially without a formidable backup player in his position. Sure, we have DeAndre Bembry. Sure, we have Paul Watson who can do some minutes there, but nothing formidable from an offensive standpoint in the small forward position. And the small forward position for most NBA teams is the most important position on the court because the wings seem to be the dominant player. So OG Ananobi, if he can ascend into this great offensive threat that I think it can become. I think the ceiling is so high for OG Ananobi. I think this guy can put up at least 15 points per game this season. I don't know if he will. We got to know what his role is on offense, but I think he definitely has the ability to get 15, 16, 17 points per game, create his own shot, pull up off the dribble because he's so good at shooting, so good at getting his points in the paint, even on the bigger defenders. If he can get that shot creation, the dribbling, the playmaking, he has the ability to reach the top. I I'm very serious about this. I love OG Ananobi. It is absolutely paramount amount for the Raptors success in the future to keep this guy locked up he goes into restricted free agency at the end of this season I'm not sure how many teams are going to be coming to snap up this guy but I imagine there will be quite a few this young startlet who is one of the already one of the best defenders in the league who is showing great signs on offense I think OG and Anobi can be an x factor for the Toronto Raptors if he improves those offensive numbers enough to be a huge threat on offense this team is going to be scary. Now we move on to the second guy I want to talk about being a potential X Factor. We've talked about him a lot on the channel, and I'm starting to have faith in Chris Boucher being an X Factor for the Toronto Raptors coming into the lineup. I mean, never really had a big role with these Toronto Raptors with the 2018-2019 G League MVP, and I think this is his time. This is his time in the NBA last season, 6.6 .6 points per game, but still, still managed one block per game despite only playing 13 minutes per game. Chris Boucher is a great shot blocker, great at timing those even on bigger defenders. And on offense, a guy who works hard, lots of energy, lots of commitment to the team on offense, is starting to be able to shoot the three at a decent amount of efficiency. 32% from three, 47% from the field, very athletic on the interior. That's what allows him to get a lot of his points. But 6.6 .6 points per game, there is room for improvement for a guy who only averaged 13 minutes a game there. Chris Boucher, I think, is now the backup big, whether it be the backup power forward, whether it be the backup center. I don't think the Raptors will trust Alex Len enough to give him that full backup center spot unless they're playing maybe a big team like, let's say, the Philadelphia 76ers where the matchup doesn't quite favor Chris Boucher down low on the interior. But still, Chris Boucher, I think one of the first rotations that we're going to see on the court, you know, the first subs that come in, you're going to see Norman Powell get his six-man role, usually takes out Kyle Lowry, and then Chris Boucher comes in for Aaron Baines, plays down low with Pascal Siakam in the front court. I think that's what we're going to see a lot. And then if Siakam comes off, Chris Boucher can still slide to the power forward position because it looks like those are the two power forwards we have on our roster, Pascal Siakam and Chris Boucher. Chris Boucher, whatever, whatever he plays, he is going to get a lot of minutes. And a guy who can spread the floor, be athletic even on other bigs, and still defend above his size is going to see a lot of time on the court. That's the style of center that seems to be kind of the modern NBA is trending towards, but we'll see Chris Boucher at 27, nearly 28 years old, about in his prime of his basketballing ability, about to enter that prime stage. I think this is the time for him to take that big, big step. Looking at his per 36 statistics, Chris Boucher averaged 18 points per game in the per 36, 12 rebounds per game, and 2.7 blocks per game. Those are scary. Scary per 36 numbers. I get a lot of his time was played in maybe garbage time. However, there's something there. There was something there. There is potential there for Chris Boucher to find near those numbers. I think we're looking at a Chris Boucher who can go from 6.6 .6 points per game. And if, he, if he's on it this season, if he's improved that three ball to make it, you know, not only get more points on the outside, on the perimeter, but because you got to D him up so tight on the perimeter and his athletic body being able to go against 
people like bigs who are maybe not as athletic as him, he can get on the interior even easier. He can create that space for himself if he manages to do this. Chris Boucher, this is a guy who can average 15 points per game, 7 to 8 rebounds a game in one and a half blocks. I don't think that's outlandish to say he can average those numbers. And if he does that, certainly, certainly, Chris Boucher is putting himself in the MIP conversation. There is MIP potential in Chris Boucher for sure. I think if there's anybody on the Raps who's going to get that award, it's definitely Chris Boucher. I honestly think he, I don't think he will win it. I don't think he will win it. There's a lot of guys there who are going out and can probably get that award. However, I think that Chris Boucher is a guy who certainly will be in the hunt for that award at the end of the season because his role is going to be so prominent where it hasn't been before. We're going to ask a lot of this guy, especially if guys like Aaron Baines are going down with injuries and we need him to play even more minutes. I'm expecting good things from Chris Boucher. You know, started the offseason unsure of him, but now reading more about him, seeing he's bulking up, seeing what he's working on, seeing his role grow in this team, I think we're in for a great season from Chris Boucher and X Factor and X Factor coming in. Going from 13 minutes, 6.6 points per game, I think we're going to see a lot more of Chris Boucher. Maybe we'll be missed on the scouting report by other teams in the early stages of the season, but I think by the end of the season, everybody is going to know what's up when it comes to Chris Boucher. So there you have it. Those are my two X Factors for the Toronto Raptors this season. I think at least one of them is going to ascend into something greater than their current state. I think they're going to be great. I think both of them are going to be fantastic for the Toronto Raptors this season. I just think, you know, who's going to be that X factor? It's going to be one of those two guys, in my opinion. So what do you guys make of these potential picks for that spot? Do you guys think somebody else on the Raptors is going to be that X factor? I think also another guy, maybe Matt Thomas getting a little bit more minutes, maybe not as much anymore because we drafted Malachi Flynn, but potential there. But let me know what you think of my picks and let me know your picks in the comments down below but that wraps up for myself for today's video thank you so much for watching if you are still here please like the video if you like and subscribe to amateur Hour sports for more content just like this you know a mark of progress on the channel you just saw the subscribe animation i finally have an animation for my subscribe button instead for that just simple button a mark of the times that's a very small growth of the channel but there are big things on the way i promise you we're looking to push on to bigger things in this channel please be a part of that movement if you enjoy the content and all if you enjoy me at all making these videos at the end of the day i believe what i say and if you disagree that is okay. We'll see you again next time for another video.